Hi, and welcome to another update on my quest to build a useful household robot. I'm in the middle of rebuilding the chassis right now, upgrading from my quickly hacked together plywood and MFD chassis to a slightly more carefully hacked together 3D printed chassis. My last update left off with a test of the suspension system I designed for this unit, and it worked well. It worked really well, and I was very happy about that. After that, it was time to make my brother's 3D printer earn its keep again, and print off a whole bunch of chassis parts. Holders for all the sensors, and then the fenders themselves to go around the outside of this beast. And after assembling all these parts, it was time to start working on the electronics to interpret the signals from the sensors themselves. Most of these sensors had an output that I could simply pipe straight into the microprocessor. The impact sensors, however, were a little different. Since they're based on a design with a spring around a post, it will contact many times for one impact as the spring bounces around. To counter this, I did a little bit of signal conditioning. I used a 0.1 microfarad capacitor and a 1 million ohm resistor to drain it, and I was able to slow down the impact signal to close to a second. This will work really well for my system, as it'll give the Arduino plenty of time to actually read the signal rather than having to fire an interrupt or something like that that could interrupt a more critical process, such as the odometers of the wheels. With that figured out, I actually slowed down and put some time into trying to make the wires in the chassis run in an organized fashion. This is kind of important at this point because there are so many of them. I wanted the circuit board to use an Arduino to interface to the higher level Jetson or Raspberry Pi. For this, I chose the Teensy 4.1 by PJRC, this is my favorite of all Arduino adjacent microcontrollers. It has a 600 MHz clock speed, a megabyte of RAM, and 41 IOs to work with. This is really a fantastic little microcontroller. So I got to work soldering up a board. Now I don't have any footage of that. Soldering circuit boards is something I find somewhat therapeutic. The camera stays off, I just put on some music or a good YouTube video and just solder away, adding component by component. It's something I enjoy. But in spite of being hand soldered, I think it turned out fairly nice. And worked really well. I mounted it up, along with the hacked together motor controllers that I'd made a while ago. They still work great, so why not reuse them? Then came the task of carefully wiring each of the proper sensors to the different headers on this circuit board. That was time consuming and rather irksome, but I pushed through. And with these in place, I began modifying the code for the Teensy microcontroller to accept all of the new inputs and tested it by simply blasting out all of the sensor data through the serial terminal. Then I mounted up my Jetson Or Nano Super. This location is temporary right now, but I wanted to start testing. I've also finally learned a new trick with this system, where I remotely program the Jetson through SSH using Visual Studio Code. This is really convenient and allows me to reprogram the robot wirelessly. Big upgrade from the way I was doing it last time, where I'd plug in a screen and keyboard every time. Yeah, you guys who have done this before, you can tease me about it, but hey, it was new for me, and now it's fantastic now that I've got it figured out. I made up a simple first program in Python, and it was laggy. Apparently, when you call read all from a serial buffer in Python, it doesn't read the whole thing, and I didn't realize that. So as the Teensy was there blasting out all this sensor data all the time, I would read the entire buffer, but it wouldn't read the whole buffer. And every time I read it, the buffer got bigger, and so my responses got more and more time delayed. Anyway, that aside, I tried it. And between that and some other possible sensor failures, the robot didn't detect the cliff in front of it and ran off. The good news is that I discovered that the suspension system in my chassis was so good as to kind of just go right over it. It was actually quite remarkable. Once I had solved my buffering problem with the program, it turned out that the cliff sensors really were a problem. They work fine on my bench and on some parts of my floor, but there isn't enough IR reflectivity from darker colored rugs, or apparently from certain parts of my kitchen floor. The robot would continue to back up or react to dark patches where it shouldn't. I tried lowering these sensors, but it didn't work anyway. I may have to find a different solution or do without them completely, but I really liked the idea of that little insurance policy that if the LiDAR or the time of flight camera miss a drop off, that these things will catch it. The impact sensors, on the other hand, 
I was expecting them to fire off falsely all the time, and their data would simply be an augmentation to the data from other sensors, such as the bump switches. But it turns out they actually are pretty reliable. They fire off about when they should, which is really nice. So, unexpected failure on the part of the cliff sensors, but unexpected success on the part of the impact sensors. Now, as I ran the robot, there were also times when the robot's motors would kind of stall out and make sort of a humming sound. I wasn't sure what that was. It had happened once or twice on the previous robot chassis, but on this one it was much more pronounced. I started to investigate with my little handheld oscilloscope, and after probing some points, I found that it was simply noise on the input power rail of the motor controllers. I didn't think this should affect anything, since the gate drive rail was fine, but I guess it must be playing havoc with the bootstrap circuitry for the high side MOSFET. Anyway, a simple 100 microfarad capacitor fixed the problem. Now with these refinements made, the robot was behaving much better. But still I was having a problem with the bumpers kind of just getting crunched. The response time between the bumper getting hit and the motors actually stopping was a bit too slow, and so the mass of this unit was simply slamming into the thing it hit, even though it does respond to it eventually. I may need to build some reflexes right into the Teensy microcontroller, so that if these bumpers get hit, it immediately stops the motors as a reflex, and then sends the data onto the high-level processing to decide what to do about it. And of course I would include a way to override the reflexes in case high-level logic said it needed to. And that brings us to the next step, and that will be to build the upright portion of this robot. The upright on this robot is essentially a robot arm. Now, arms themselves are quite a challenge to design and build, so we'll see how this goes. My first experiment will be to use this motor, which is a drive motor out of an RV power step. You know, when you open the door and the step extends itself. I mean, I've never owned an RV like that, but I've worked on some. Fun fact, I used to fix RVs in times past, a uh, long time ago now. Now this motor doesn't have any access to its armature, so I'm going to have to see if I can do a servo loop without a good velocity reading on the motor itself. I'll simply have to interpret that from the positional data. Now they do this in hobby servos all the time, so obviously it's possible. We'll see how well I can get it to work. And finally, once I get that done, I'll also be able to share with you another little innovation I've been working on. And that is, I've taken the Time of Flight camera and paired it with a Raspberry Pi Zero W2 and an IMU, the Adafruit BN0055 to be precise, and created a mapping unit all in one piece. And the idea is this will simply slide into the front of the head as an entire unit. And I'm hoping that this will do all of the mapping for me. That might be a little ambitious, but it would be cool. Because then I'd have a drop-in navigation system I could simply put in any robot, and voila, I've got it. So that's where I am now. Give this video a like, subscribe if you want to follow along on my progress, and thanks for watching. I'm Joe. See you later.